Hello guys and welcome to RC Shim. This will be a short, quick review overview of the ISDT charger. This thing here came from Banggood. I actually requested it for review. I have to note though, I didn't charge a lot with it yet because it's yeah not, not the season where you charge a lot of batteries unfortunately. But I trust that the charging itself will be will be just fine and that's more the features that we're talking about today. So first feature, this is really small. It kind of fits in the middle between a really large charger and this tiny, tiny thing here. I have my ultra power here, which I also reviewed. You can find the link here <laughs> to this thing here. It's nice. It's also a dual charger. But it's more the kind where you just have two devices built into one into one body and it's kind of old school but versatile with these extension boards for your balance leads it has a USB connected to charge USB normal banana plug uh, thing is which you can switch with many other things you can feed it with external power from 11 to 18 volts or of course with your standard AC power. It has some massive fans and this thing is really loud if it charges and if it turns on the fans and it's yeah, just a heavyweight. But the advantages of the larger uh, chargers, the larger chargers, <laughs> this is a 400 watt charger so you can charge really fat lipos with it and this is only a two times 100 watt charger so this is rather pointed for the mini quad batteries or for normal three cell and four cell batteries of your normal flying crafts not so much the larger batteries like if you fly impel jets and have uh, 12s something you can charge it with this and larger six cell batteries also will take some time with this but for this normal uh, mini quad batteries. I mean, this is already a larger one with one eight. You're really good to go with this thing. And you can charge two of them at the same time with different settings. That's nice. And what what I li especially like about this thing here, it doesn't have an external power supply. So you just have this two plug cable, which is a pretty standard cable. So even if you forget this cable, uh, you will maybe find it or borrow it from someone. Standard cable, no external power supply, power supply is built in. You have the balance connectors there, that means you can only use XH, JT or whatever they called. And it has XD60 plugs to use. If you want to charge other stuff with this, you need some adapters. And not just this banana plug uh, cables that are quite familiar with chargers. So maybe one crucial adapter that you need is this XT60. Two goggles battery plug. So you can also charge your goggles batteries with this thing here. You can only take AC power in. So if you want to charge it in your car or want to use it in your car, you have to have an inverter to get 110 or 230 volts to this cable here. So not the best for mobile charging if you only have 12 volts. If you want a mobile charge a lot, get this tiny brother of the ISDD2. I also like this tiny thing here. You can use this as a power in from 9 to 32 volts. So this is also meant to use fat 6 cell or, or even more cells as a power source on the go and this is the power outlet so once again you have the balance plug and the XT60 uh, you have a display and this turn push button combination to browse the menu I really love this little thing here of course this can only charge with 150 watts and this thing has no built-in power supply of course they wouldn't be able to fit it in such a tiny device so you either need an external power supply in your home charging environment 
or you charge it using a battery or you have a connector from your from your power outlet of the car to XD60 plug it in here and then this thing has power and can charge so this is nice and small as well and maybe the best solution for mobile charging but it's only a single charge you can use this small thing here to empty your larger batteries because if you have like say really fat batteries and you don't have time to fly with them it's not a good idea to have them charged all the time with 100% so you can use them for a power source until they are around 50% of their capacity so that's a nice thing to get the fat batteries to so storage charge that's a small little tip from me this thing here is a dual charger I love dual chargers I don't do parallel charge I'm just not into it yet maybe I will take a look at it in the future I will connect a battery as well so we actually see something nice so once you plug it in you have some readings here it shows you the cells but not all of them on this tiny half screen size if you press this here you see only the channel 1 you see all the voltages of the cells which is nice and with this menu wheel you can scroll through yeah, temperature the whole voltage of the battery pack but if you press it you're in the menu yeah and, and one one critical point maybe in general I love this concept with a, a scroll wheel that you can also push but this here uh, yeah sometimes it jumps two lines so it's not a hundred percent easy to or, or intuitive to use it but yeah one will be fine with it in the default mode it will detect of course the cell count it may not detect if it's a lipo or some other battery type but most of our batteries are lipos what other batteries can it charge yeah the lithium high voltage which is 4.35 volts per cell uh, maybe they will be more common for high power quads i don't know lipos of course lithium iron lithium ferret lead batteries and nickel metal hydrate so some of the older chargers don't know lithium high volt but the others are quite common you could modify the end cell voltage for example if you have larger batteries and want to save some lifespan you can decrease the end voltage a bit not fill it up 100 percent but have longer lifetime but normally you charge it up to 4.2 volts per cell like this is a 1800 milliamp battery you should charge it with 1c means with 1.8 amps so it would roughly charge for one hour if it's totally empty you can of course if you have not so much time you can most of the batteries you can charge them with two c's but one c is the recommended thing yeah and then you just hit start task and what would you expect it starts charging it shows you the amount of ampere that it charges into it and after some seconds it moves into this overview mode where you see both channels if you want to see more details go on the channel one yeah and you can yeah you see the internal resistance of the batteries but it will measure it only once a minute or something like this and it jumps out into overview a bit too fast for my taste but it's okay so you see the this is kind of a quality indicator for your batteries the lower the better the internal resistance but also all your cells should have the same internal resistance or so something is going on with this battery here of course you should also have all the same volts on your cells if it's properly balanced 
which kind of is here. You have no fancy graphical uh, curve which shows you the charge uh, status, but yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, and now we could continue and connect a second battery and have totally different settings and charge it up here. Down here you see how many milliamps it did charge into the pack. It also gives you an estimation when it will be ready. And of course the voltage. If the voltage is at 16.8 it's kind of full. <laughs> the whole device feels, feels good. It's a solid block, it's kind of leaned forward. Uh, you see on the side it has this USB charging connector. And this is the update port, but you don't get an update cable. Actually, <laughs> sorry. Actually, you don't get a whole lot. Uh, it's just someone telling us that there's a revolution starting here. Uh, a few lines of manual. This is just nothing. No. So no cable in this, other than the, the power cable here. So, if there is a firmware update, you would need this extra cable here, which looks the same port as on the small, smaller brother. The design seems to be quite nice. Nothing on this side. On the back side, you have the fan and the power connector. Hi guys. <laughs> Okay, a review about the charger shouldn't, shouldn't be too long. Uh, I just wanted to give you this review as soon as possible because there is a coupon code that's valid uh, one week or so. So go check out the description in my video to find this, I don't know how expensive, uh, around $100. But it's, it may feel expensive, but it's also a good build quality. And on chargers, I wouldn't wanna save too much money or get too cheap stuff yeah because if something goes wrong with charging you could burn down your house okay so thanks for watching this review if you like this review please give me a thumb uh, it really helps rank my videos higher and make more videos for you guys subscribe if you didn't you know the deal and let me know in the comments your ideas about chargers what did I forget? Your tips and tricks. What do you use for charging? Like, I have a lot of chargers and I really love the dual chargers. Do you even have a quad charger? What about parallel charging? Is it really a thing? Are there good parallel charging boards that one can trust? So not everything goes into smoke. I will. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on parallel charging, but yeah, there are already many. So, thanks for watching. Bye.